Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Welcome, Anita and Georgia, Paul, uh, Jafina, and John Paul just joined us. Thank you for joining class. Uh, welcome, Lyndon, as well. Uh, we finished our prayer, uh, but we had forgotten to uh, record, so we'll begin class. I'll just share the uh, screen with you. Okay, are you all able to see uh, the the PDF notes which are presented? Are you all able to see that? Yes. Okay. I'll have to do that again because this uh, goes... Okay, so uh, welcome to class, everyone. Um, last uh, week, uh, last Wednesday, we began uh, looking at uh, chapter five. So we're looking at uh, Kingdom Builders a Lifestyle. And um, uh, in this chapter, we're basically going to be looking at how we live as uh, Kingdom Builders. And we're going to address three main areas. Uh, one is uh, godly. Uh, character. The other one is spiritual maturity, and the third one is stewardship. Uh, we looked at uh, godly character and spiritual maturity last class. Um, uh, today we'll begin looking at um, uh, kingdom stewardship. We all we kind of studied a little bit about uh, stewardship when we. Um, uh, we're studying the book uh, Kingdom Builders where when we were looking at the parables, but we'll just look at it in a little more uh, in, in depth, okay? So, um, you know, as uh, as people who are, uh, you know, going to be leaders in God's kingdom, we are going to be kingdom builders. Uh, each one of us uh, have to be stewards. We need to be stewards uh, in the way that we um, live, okay? Um, we are required to be stewards of, um, you know, in the way we live our lives, in the way we conduct our lives. So uh, uh, even as we're going to be kingdom leaders uh, and take over the responsibility of kingdom building, so leadership requires stewardship, and that is expressed uh, the way that we live, the way we conduct our um, lives. We are also stewards of the mysteries of God, uh, and the gifts and the grace of um, God. As uh, we read here uh, in First Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, if you look on your screen, uh, you know, Paul is writing and saying that, you know, um, as servants of Christ, we need to be stewards of the mysteries of God. That means of the revelation that God has uh, uh, given to us. Uh, in First Peter chapter 4, verse 10, uh, Peter writes and says, you know, uh, even as we've received a gift uh, and that gift that God has given us is to minister to one another, we need to be manifold, uh, we need to be good stewards of the manifold grace of uh, God. Okay, and look at uh, what Paul is writing to Titus, who he left at Crete to oversee the churches. Uh, in, uh, in Crete, he says, you know, a bishop, and he's telling uh, Titus, you have to choose leaders, and he's giving him the qualifications that he has to look for in a leader, and he's saying, you know, uh, and even as you choose a bishop, a leader, you know, he must be a good steward of God. So stewardship is very important in leadership, in building um, God's kingdom. So, you know, we need to be good stewards in the way that we live our lives, the way we conduct our lives. And also we need to be good stewards of the mysteries that God has given to us, uh, the gifts that God has given to us and the grace of God uh, that, um, you know, that God uh, releases to us to fulfill a specific function, role, 
um, and the gifts that he has given to us to fulfill a specific function in the body of Christ uh, uh, in building God's kingdom. So what does it mean to be a steward of God? Uh, now the Greek word for steward is oikonomos, which and uh, which comes from the two Greek words oikos, which means house, and nomos means a law. Uh, it's basically somebody who is uh, like a manager, you know, uh, in charge of a household or an estate, um, or, or like a governor taking care of, uh, you know, uh, 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 managing an estate, uh, a treasurer. Um, so uh, basically a steward is a manager, a uh, overseer and a caretaker, uh, somebody who's put in charge of another person's uh, goods, someone who's made uh, responsible for something that is not basically their own and they're entrusted with the responsibility to manage uh, uh, the estate or the household uh, affairs, which is not theirs but belongs to uh, somebody else. Okay, so a steward must ensure that you know things function properly, things are profitable, um, you know everything is accounted for, um, the produce of the land, the things that are brought in, the things that are sent out, uh, the people who are working in the estate, in the household. Uh, he must also protect and safeguard what is in his care. We look at each of these points in detail in a bit. Uh, he must also ensure continuity. That means train up somebody who will oversee the work after he leaves or he is um, gone. And I, like I just pointed out, you know, what are we good stewards of? We are good stewards of the gospel that God has given to us. Um, you know, um, uh, God has entrusted us the gospel, the mandate to preach and teach and to baptize the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are also good stewards of the uh, mysteries of God. Uh, we read that in, uh, in this verse here. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. You know, First uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says, Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So, you know, uh, Paul considered himself as a steward of the mysteries of God, the revelations that was given uh, to him, that was revealed to him during his 17 years, a silent period when he received so much of revelation that he writes to the churches. So he says we need to protect and guard, uh, you know, be good stewards of the mysteries of God. God, the revelation that God has given to us and also the, the gifts of grace uh, that are given to us. The gifts of grace are given uh, to function in the role, in the responsibilities, in the plans and the purposes uh, that, that God has called us for uh, to build his kingdom and the edification of the uh, church. Okay, so we look at uh, each of these uh, characteristics. What is the characteristics of a good steward in God's uh, kingdom? Uh, we said that a good steward ensures proper uh, functioning. Uh, you know, we are responsible for uh, the functioning of uh, the work of God's kingdom here on earth, which God has entrusted to us. So everything that he has entrusted to us, we need to see that it is in proper uh, order. Everything is working um, uh, smoothly. It's fine-tuned. Uh, and, uh, you know, Paul says about his own ministry in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. Can one of you read that, please? It's on the screen. Second Corinthians six three to four. Second Corinthians chapter six verse three to four. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be great, but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Thank you, Jeffina. So here we see that, you know, Paul is saying that in everything, in every area of his life, he, you know, he works out things so perfectly in order, uh, you know, so that uh, people uh, find no offense uh, in his life, in his conduct, in his ministry, so people will not uh, blame him. And so also as good stewards, we need to ensure that, you know, the way that we live, conduct our lives, the way we do ministry is... Uh, in order, in such perfection, 
uh, that nobody will uh, blame us. A good steward also ensures a profitability. Uh, we uh, studied this when we looked at uh, the parables that you know God is looking for fruits. He's looking uh, for a profit. He's going to ask us how uh, what we have uh, done with what He has given to us, how we've invested it, how we've earned what we have done. So uh, you know, fruitfulness is very important in God's kingdom, and uh, you know, our fruitfulness is uh, when we bear fruit, when we are being fruitful. You know, the Father is glorified, like we read uh, in John chapter fifteen verse 8 okay and if uh, you know we constantly need to uh, judge ourselves whether in our lives we are bearing fruit we need to look at uh, you know the the ministries or the talents the gifts that god has given to us are we bearing fruit so we need to uh, you know uh, continuously or frequently you know assess ourselves the work that god has given to us the talents that he's placed in our hands to see if we are being uh, fruitful and if you're not being fruitful in any area of our life then we need to uh, you know ask the holy spirit to show us lead us and we need to make the right changes so that we can bear a of good fruit for his kingdom so that the father will be uh, glorified a good steward also ensures uh, accountability uh, we are accountable to god we are answerable to god for uh, you know um, every work that we do uh, you know paul reminds us in uh, second corinthians chapter 5 verses 9 to 10 that you know all of us will appear before the judgment seat of god and we are all uh, to give an account and we also learn this uh, in the parables that you know each one of us will be asked an account for uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, the things that god has entrusted in our uh, care and uh, you know like we looked in the parable of the uh, steward in uh, in um, in luke chapter 16 we see that a steward who is found wasteful or unproductive um, you know or will uh, will you know not no longer be uh, uh, given the responsibility of being a steward whatever is uh, given to him will be taken away and will be given to the one that has uh, worked hard and has uh, profited from what God has um, blessed them okay so we read this in uh, in Luke chapter 16 we look at uh, this um, uh, this parable as well so you know there was a certain rich man who had a steward and you know accusations were brought against him uh, that he was wasting his goods and uh, so the uh, rich man called a steward and he said you know give an account of your stewardship because you will no longer be a, a steward we look at this uh, parable again in detail in a little bit but uh, we see that you know even as uh, this parable teaches us we will also be called to give an account for uh, what God has entrusted to us. And if, uh, you know, we are not bearing fruit, we, if we are not being accountable, uh, if we are not being productive in what God has blessed us with, then, you know, whatever God has given uh, to us, he will take it away and it will be given to those, um, you know, who have uh, been productive, who have been useful in what God has given to them. A good steward ensures uh, uh, security. Um, uh, we must guard what has been entrusted to us. We must guard, um, uh, you know, the, the the revelations, the mysteries that God has given to us from uh, from uh, people uh, who are false teachers, who are false interpreters of God's word. Uh, we also need to guard uh, the gifts and the grace of God uh, that uh, God has uh, uh, bestowed upon us because we know that people misuse the gifts of God, uh, the grace of God. And so we need to, as uh, kingdom builders, um, uh, who are building God's kingdom, we need to ensure that there is no misuse, that uh, the revelations, the mysteries of God are well handled, taught well, uh, in uh, in the right perspective, in the right way that God has revealed uh, things to us, or the word of God has made things known to us. A good steward also ensures uh, continuity, uh, you know, um, uh, a good steward is responsible for nurturing other people under their care uh, so that when they have to leave, 
or uh, it's time for them to go. You know, there are others who are, uh, in a, uh, you know, efficient enough to take on their responsibility and continue uh, the work. So, you know, as uh, pastors, as teachers, as leaders, even as people who are leading worship or, you know, part of a Bible study group where we are handling a Bible study group or uh, we are ministering to a, uh, to a group of youth, you know, um, we don't have the guarantee that we are always going to be with them. Uh, things might change. We might go into move into a new season in life, which requires us to do something different. Uh, so we have to move on. Or also, we need to, we will be in a new season where we'll be traveling uh, for work, or you know, we move totally to a new place, um, or we uh, you know take on new responsibilities. Um, hence, it's important that we are always on the lookout to see who can. Uh, uh, you know, build on the work that we have started, whether it's your uh, life group or a Bible study group that you've started or a prayer group that you've started in your um, office or at the workplace or in your neighborhood. Uh, you never know, you might change homes or you might, um, you know, uh, change your job. And so you will leave. So, you know, constantly be look out for uh, who can continue the work even as you leave uh, so that when you leave, the work is not hindered, does not come to a standstill and a, a full stop. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, train up the people so that they can, um, you know, build on the work that you have uh, started so it grows much better and um, stronger. OK, a good steward is also, uh, you know, faithful and um, uh, wise. Um, OK, so here we uh, look at this um, parable in Luke chapter uh, 12. So it's on your screen. Um, can somebody read this parable quickly for us, please? Anyone? Luke chapter 12, verse 41 to 48. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise to work, whom his master will make to rule over his household, to give, to give them their proportion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master will find so, doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him rule over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master delay his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day and he's not looking for him and at a hour when he is not aware and will cut him into, into and appoint him this portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask for more. Thank you, Jeffina. So a few things that we can learn from this uh, parable is, uh, you know, um, when we are good stewards, it uh, gives us, uh, you know, takes us to the next level. Uh, we can go, uh, God will take us to, you know, move us from glory to glory, from one season of glory to next season of glory, uh, where, you know, God will entrust us with more, more of, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, uh, the revelations, the mysteries of the gospel, uh, more of, uh, you know, flowing in the gifts of the spirit. So, you know, uh, we need to be wise and a faithful uh, steward. Okay, so that is what God is looking for. Uh, he's looking for stewards who are faithful um, and uh, wise faithful means uh, those who are dependable uh, those who are trustworthy you know those who are have uh, the essence of being very sincere so faithfulness means we need to be sincere uh, dependable uh, we are trustworthy uh, you know, and God is looking for uh, faithful stewards and also wise stewards. Why? Why is it saying that He needs wise stewards? Anyone? So you can discharge if you are wise. If you are a wise steward, you can discharge your duties properly. Thank you, Isaac. If you're a wise steward, you can discharge your duties properly. Good. 
why else is it important to be a wise steward? Somebody who's wise is able to discern the times and the seasons, uh, is able to think and plan uh, for the future, uh, is able to look into the future, is able to look at, uh, you know, um, what are the uh, repercussions if they do something, they don't do something, uh, you know, what are the profits that will come in if uh, they venture into doing something. So, you know, a wise steward is very important because a wise steward is one who thinks ahead of time, who plans, who's able to see, um, uh, you know, where the pitfalls are, the downfalls are, where, uh, you know, things that they need to grow, areas they need to grow, areas where they can profit, they can do well. Uh, so God is looking for faithful and wise stewards. So if you're, you know, all of you, uh, I'm assuming, are, you know, uh, uh, wanting to be kingdom builders, you're already kingdom builders, and that is why you've taken the step to uh, join a Bible college course because you want to build yourself up, and uh, hence, you know, you are planning to be kingdom builders. Some of you are already doing the work of the kingdom builder, and so God is looking for wise and faithful stewards. So, what we can pray is, God, you know, give me the wisdom. Uh, to know what season I am in, uh, to plan in this season, and also to see what you are uh, working in and through me, what you are preparing me for the next season, and uh, give me the strategies, give me the uh, uh, the avenues, the people that I can uh, connect with, uh, you know, give me the wisdom to speak to the right kind of uh, people to engage uh, in business and doing the right things in the right way. Uh, give me the wisdom to know, uh, you know, uh, uh, who is um, for this and not who is against me. Uh, so, you know, it requires wisdom and also uh, faithfulness. So that's why it says in verse 42, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler um, uh, over his uh, household, okay? So stewardship is not uh, doing what we like, okay? It's, uh, you know, it's doing what the master wants. It's just doing his will. It's aligning our will to the master's will and doing what he wants us to do, as Jafina read in verse 47. Uh, and that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Basically, it talks about, you know, will be punished. Uh, beaten with many stripes means will be uh, punished, okay? Um, uh, and we look at, um, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, uh, Paul is writing uh, in First Timothy. He says, and I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who's enabled me because he counted me faithful, uh, putting me in uh, to the ministry. So God is more interested uh, not in how many uh, buildings we build, how many churches we plant, you know, um, uh, uh, how many places we go and preach, but he's looking at uh, how faithful we are in what he has entrusted to us, the sheep that he has given to our care, the gifts that he has entrusted to us, and uh, the revelations that he has uh, given to us to reveal uh, to his uh, people okay uh, we look at an, another parable um, uh, the parable of the unjust steward okay uh, we looked at this parable uh, when we studied uh, in uh, the book uh, uh, the kingdom of God and basically you know uh, it's about this steward who was not being a good steward he was uh, wasting away his uh, his uh, his master's goods so his master uh, you know realized it um, when there was an accusation brought against the steward so he calls the steward and he says give an account uh, you know of your stewardship because you no longer can be a, a steward okay so uh, then the steward you know realized that he's going to lose his uh, position um, and uh, you know he um, uh, you know, he goes back and uh, he, you know, uh, calls all of his, the, the debtors who owns uh, debts to this rich man. And uh, he asks the first one, how much uh, do you own my master? So he says, you know, 100 measures of oil. He said, take the bill, sit down and make it uh, 50. 
Okay, and so then uh, another person, hundred measures of wheat. He said, you know, to, uh, you know, take your bill and write uh, eighty. So he reduces his, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the bill for everyone who owed his uh, rich master, uh, and he did this, uh, did this because you know, once he loses his, he knows he's going to lose his position uh, as being a steward. So once he loses his position, at least he will have the favor of, uh, you know, uh, the people. Uh, uh, around him okay and uh, so here we see that uh, you know he loses his uh, position but then he gains the favor of uh, uh, the people um, around him and look at um, a verse um, you know verse 9 uh, 10 11 and 12 so can somebody else please read verses 9 10 11 and 12 please it's on your screen anyone Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I say to you, you may transfer yourself by any righteous manner, but when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, who will commit to you trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, so here we see that, you know, um, uh, uh, Jesus, when he's talking about this parable, uh, you know, he's not com uh, commending this steward, you know, for what he did. Uh, but he says, you know, he calls him an unjust steward or he calls him a crooked manager, uh, you know, but uh, uh, Jesus commends him for acting wisely or in a you know in a wise manner in a prudent way uh, because uh, you know he thinks ahead of time and he's able to plan for his life uh, uh, again uh, you know uh, ahead of time so that even as he loses his uh, position you know um, uh, and he's not going to be earning anything at least he's built up some friendships you know which uh, who can help him who can at least you know help him in getting a job or they can provide him uh, a, a, a job or they can you know do the help uh, they can return their help for what he has uh, helped them uh, with but some things that we can learn about uh, uh, a good steward is uh, from this parable is that a good steward is faithful in uh, little things just like uh, jeffina just uh, read you know if you're faithful in uh, little things you know uh, god will be, will make you uh, will entrust uh, even more uh, to you but if you're faithful or uh, unfaithful in uh, little things you know whatever has been given to you that also will be uh, taken away so faithfulness uh, is very important in little things you know god does not suddenly just entrust big things to us he entrusts us with small things and sees how faithful we are in those little things and when we are faithful in the little things that you know god has given to us in terms of us being uh faithful sincere wise uh productive bearing fruit you know uh it, that qualifies us uh uh you know for god uh to entrust us with bigger things okay uh, the important thing that we need to uh note here is that we need to be good stewards of the money uh, the way that we handle money we need to be faithful in the way that we handle uh, money all often we think that you know money is uh, the unrighteous mammon um, and we think that god does not uh, pay attention to it but you know god looks at how we handle money at the, the resources that he's given to us the the wealth the riches the money that he's uh, given uh, to us and here in this parable it's very interesting that you know the one who properly handles money Money, uh, it says in verse 11 therefore if you have been faithful in unrighteous mammon who will commit you uh, commit to your trust the true uh, riches so if you are not faithful in uh in in um 
being good stewards of the way we spend money, the way we take care of our finances. Uh, you know, if you're not good stewards, then, you know, uh, how can God entrust us with uh, true uh, riches? Okay. Uh, also, a good steward is faithful in what is uh, another man's. Um, like we read, read in verse 12, and if you're not being faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your uh, own? So some, you know, uh, you know, even before God entrusts us with our own church or our own ministry, our own organization or our own business venture, whatever, you know, uh, he may put us uh, to work under somebody else. And if we are not faithful uh, in, the, in the way that we use the time, the resources, the skills, the abilities, uh, the talents, uh, even the, the 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 money that uh, uh, that is part of that organization, then you know God cannot entrust us with what is our uh, own. So you know stewardship, uh, you know, not only requires us to be faithful, not only requires us to be wise, but also you know stewardship re uh, requires us to be responsible. Uh, First Corinthians chapter nine verse seventeen, it's on your screen says. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against uh, my will, I have been entrusted with the uh, stewardship. So we need to do things willingly, uh, take responsibility. And, uh, you know, stewardship always calls for uh, sacrifice. You know, when we are in charge, we're taking care of things. Uh, we're entrusted with uh, uh, things that are not our own, you know, um, and also being stewards of the mysteries of God, the revelation, the gifts, the grace of God. You know, it calls for sacrifices. That means it calls for us to uh, sacrifice the things of the world, the things of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, crucify our flesh, and also saying no to a lot of worldly things, worldly entities entertainment, um, worldly lifestyles, because, you know, we are focused on uh, bearing fruit, uh, which will uh, ultimately glorify or bring glory uh, to our Father, who is uh, the King of this kingdom. Okay, so that is um, lesson five uh, about um, uh, kingdom lifestyle. Anyone has any questions before we move on to chapter six? Any questions? Anyone knows this uh, uh, small chorus that the beauty of Jesus be seen in me? Okay, thank you, Rubega. Anyone knows this uh, chorus, Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen in Me? It's a very beautiful uh, chorus, okay. Jeffina, do you know it, dear? No, Pastor. No, okay. What about John Paul? It's a beautiful chorus. It says, Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wonderful passion and purity. Oh, thou spirit divine, all my nature refine till the Beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Just four lines, but so powerful, you know. Uh, so let that be our prayer that even as we are kingdom builders, that, uh, you know, that we would bear fruit so that, uh, you know, Father in heaven be glorified, that the beauty of Jesus would be seen in us, um, all his passion and purity. Um, that will be refined uh, so that we can live kingdom lifestyles um, uh, just the way Jesus wants us to, so that we can uh, represent Christ and represent him here on the earth. Okay. If there are no questions, can we move on to chapter six? Yes, Isaac. 
Yes, um, about the kingdom stewardship, I just want to ask them, um, how can we describe uh, the attitude of certain uh, men of God or pastors, because these things are prevalent in our own part of the world. Sometimes they are placed under the leadership of either the leader or the founder of a ministry, and they grow, they develop certain talent, they get some anointing. Instead of continuing the ministry for one or two reasons, their personal reason, they break away and start to form their own church. How can we describe them? How can we describe their stewardship? So you're saying that uh, those who are in ministry, they have started off well, they've been faithful, uh, committed, but then you're saying that later on they uh, fall away, they go away from the church, or you're basically saying they go away and they start their own organization or church. Is that what you're saying, uh, Isaac? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sometimes, uh, because according to what we have learned, you can grow people and then release them. But sometimes they don't wait for that and they go by themselves. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, um, we learned in chapter one or chapter two of, uh, you know, the, uh, the kingdom of God that, uh, you know, we don't have a control over the will of uh, a person, you know, the choices that they make, their will, what they choose, what they want to do. Uh, we can, of course, tell them, but, uh, you know, we don't have control over their will. So uh, it's sad that, you know, uh, uh, they go away, they branch out, they start their own. Maybe they're upset about some things that are happening in the organization or in the church, and they're frustrated, they just want to leave. Um, I know that, you know, uh, the way we enter is the same way that we need to exit. Uh, we enter, uh, you know, on a very happy note, uh, uh, the right note, a very positive note. And even when we leave, God requires us to leave on that same positive, right, godly way. But many times it does not happen because there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of uh, wrong done to them or uh, they are not able to cope with things or basically they are looking for... Uh, uh, you know, they're looking for uh, something that is totally uh, outside, uh, you know, what is a kingdom builder's lifestyle in terms of they're looking for more position, authority and power, which they're not getting in this place. So they think when they start their own, uh, you know, they can do that. So sometimes it can be very selfish. Sometimes we, we are no place to judge them. But all we can do is, you know, um, uh, you know, we just pray that wherever they branch out or branch uh, 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 and start off something new, that you know they are uh, 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 they are bearing fruit for God. They're bringing glory to His kingdom. That they are not misleading people, misguiding people, and hence it's so important for us to pray for those in leadership and those in in authority. Yes. Uh, and also, you know, because now you're going through these uh, courses, you know, Kingdom Builders uh, uh, and, uh, you know, Kingdom of God, you can actually take these two books and you can even, you know, start uh, uh, ministering to pastors and leaders uh, in your own uh, countries, in your own cities, in your own towns, you know, have a one day uh, workshop where you're just teaching them all of this. It's, sometimes it's because, uh, you know, uh, the lack of teaching, uh, they're so busy in ministry, they don't have time to read God's word. So, you know, they're kind of uh, loose, they go on the wrong track. Uh, so it's important for us to get them, to teach them, to minister to them. So you can have leaders conference, pastors conference, where you can teach them, you know, um, uh, from these two uh, publications from APC, also from uh, the publication Code of Honor, House of God. Uh, so even as you teach and minister, Minister, you know, uh, you can raise up, uh, uh, you know, uh, leaders who uh, have uh, aligned back to God's will, have a right understanding of what it is to be kingdom builders, to build God's kingdom. Uh, you can even do that. You can pray about it, um, Isaac. You can, uh, you know, also collaborate with other pastors and maybe start teaching this 
uh, to the pastors and leaders in your own town, city, and in the nation. You know, you never know when you have this heartfelt desire, a stirring in your heart. It can even be a stirring in your heart that we, um, like, you know, just Nehemiah uh, heard the walls of uh, Jerusalem were ruined. He had a stirring in his heart that led him to uh, build the walls of Jerusalem. So if you have this theory in your heart, fast, pray, you know, God can open doors and you can start teaching this. And even as you start teaching, the Spirit of God can work in the lives of people. It's because people don't have the right kind of teaching that also can uh, mislead them and misguide them. Yes. Did that help, Isaac? Yes, ma. I, I accept. I agree with you, especially when you said it's, if it is for a good reason, yeah, it's fine. Like you said, the way we enter, you enter in peace, you live in peace, and it's good. It's only for some, I think, uh, for other reasons. But like you already said, it may be lack of proper knowledge, and some go for all selfish reasons. But if it is for the glory of God, it is good. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. So we'll soon hear, uh, uh, see your posters that you are going to be preaching, I mean, teaching pastors and leaders in your place from these uh, APC publications. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, yes ma. Okay. Um, uh, anyone has any questions? Thank you, Isaac, for your question. Anyone else has any questions? Okay, if not, we will move to chapter six. Um, uh, chapter six is talking about uh, building people. So kingdom building uh, is not about building an organization or church. It's not just raising up buildings. Uh, it's not even about, uh, you know, organizing events and programs and conferences. Uh, well, all these are important because all these uh, actually help in edifying uh, the people who, uh, you know, uh, is kingdom building is all about because kingdom building is all about building people. Uh, so that should be our focus. Okay, so how do we build, uh, uh, you know, people? We build them by the spirit. So we look at that uh, in this chapter. Okay, uh, we look at a few uh, references about uh, what Paul says and how he conducts his ministry and what is the importance in Paul's uh, ministry. So, you know, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it's on your screen, it says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, uh, you are God's building. So, you know, um, Paul is referring to God's people as God's field and as God's building. And uh, Paul is saying that he is a fellow worker or he's a co-worker. So he's working along with uh, God uh, in, uh, in, in, in edifying and building up uh, God's field, God's building that is um, the people. So many times, you know, we get so caught up in... Uh, uh, in, uh, you know, building a church, uh, a physical building, uh, you know, in church administration, in just having events and programs. Uh, but we forget that, uh, you know, all of this should actually uh, result in people being edified, people's life being transformed, being more Christ-like, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, accepting Christ, people, uh, you know, being uh, identifying their function in the body of Christ in the local church, uh, identifying their gifts, uh, you know, and just being used mightily by um, God, you know. Um, Paul, he says that, you know, um, uh, if you ask him, okay, um, what he's achieved in, 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 uh, in ministry, you know, he's not going to be saying that, you know, I did so many mission trips, uh, I established so many churches, I raised up so many leaders, you know, I preached so many sermons, I equipped so many young people, so many ministers of God, I wrote so many epistles, but he points out to, uh, you know, his work in the Lord is he points out to people. He says, uh, are you not my work in the Lord? In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. So, you know, uh, uh, even as, um, you know, we move ahead, uh, 
you know, from ministry and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we reach our eternal home, uh, we should not be seen as people who just build buildings, but, you know, we should, uh, as, you know, people should know us as one who has left a lasting impact, who made an uh, impact in their lives for the gospel, for uh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, look at how Paul, uh, what Paul says about the people of God here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. He says, you know, uh, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the uh, spirit. So we see that God is building people uh, to be a people in whose midst he can come and uh, dwell. That is what he did from the very beginning, right? Even as he created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, you know, he came every day to have, he came and met them. He had fellowship with them. He created them uh, to, uh, to have communion uh, with them, to fellowship uh, with them. We also see that uh, he did the same with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He related to them. We also see that he did this with the people of Israel. You know, he uh, he would his presence would come in the tabernacle, and uh, you know he would speak, and uh, people could hear him. Uh, so you know uh, he uh, uh, you know he dwelt among his people. He was known as a God who dwelt among his people and even today he knows he's known as a God who dwells among his people because you know our bodies are the temple of the living God where the most high God dwells uh, himself so God does not dwell in uh, in man-made buildings uh, in tents in buildings but you know he dwells in our uh, bodies and he's interested in building each one of us uh, to be a spiritual house to be a royal priesthood to be a holy nation so that we can offer up spiritual sacrifices that are pleasing and acceptable to God as we read in first Peter uh, chapter uh, 5 so God is not uh, looking at a spiritual house in the sense of a spiritual building what he mentions here in first Peter chapter 2 verse 5 says you also as living stones so here he's talking about living stones not uh, the bricks or the stones that are used to build a building but he's referring to the people of God as living stones you know each one of us are living stones that are used to build up the body of Christ so each one of us are part of the body of Christ we each one of us have a function um even though each one of us are individual members, uh, just like in our, you know, and Paul compares um, the body of Christ to our physical body, uh, where he says, you know, even though there are, you know, a physical body has different parts, each one of them are individual parts, each one of them have individual functions, each one of them function in their own individuality, but everything works for the fine tuning, the wholeness and the perfection of our uh, body. In the same way, he's saying that, you know, we are a spiritual house okay uh, so sometimes when we go to church you know we are very holy uh, we uh, uh, we come down with a sense of holiness and reverence which is important but we also need to remember that day in and day out uh, we are living in uh, you know our bodies that are the temple of the most high uh, God so he's saying that you know he's work Paul is saying that he's ministering to he's working among people who are living stones um, and uh, he's saying that you know he's there to build them up uh, into a spiritual um, house so as kingdom builders you know it's important that we have a heart for uh, people just like uh, Paul you know Apostle Paul um, he says that you know uh, in first corinthians chapter 7 verse 3 it's on your screen he says uh, for i have said before that you are in our hearts so he's saying that you know paul is saying that you know people are in his hearts you know who do we keep in our hearts we keep people who we treasure the most who we love the most are very precious to us who we value the most and who are very dear to us okay uh, so he's saying that you know i treasure each one of you that means he values each one of them they're precious to him and he's saying that he's willing to live or die together for uh, them you know uh, paul uh, writing to the church at rome I think in Romans chapter 11, uh, he uses a very strong, uh, or I think it's in chapter 9 or uh, you know, chapter, one of those chapters, 9, 10, 11, he uses a very strong word. He says that, you know, I'm willing to even uh, give up my... Um, uh, he's so he's so burdened for his own people, the Jews, uh, because, you know, they, theirs were the prophets, the, you know, they were the prophets, they were the 
priesthood that God has chosen. He had given them the uh, the laws, the commandments, uh, the, the rituals, the circumcision rituals. Uh, but you know, he knows that you know they have rejected uh, the truth that is in the gospel in uh, in Jesus Christ, and he says, you know, uh, he's willing to even go to hell or even you know give up his salvation if only the Jews can be uh, saved. So we see his love for his own people, the love for the people that he's uh, ministering to, and so it's important for us, you know, uh, to write people in our hearts. And we'll come back after the break and see why it's important for us to write people in our hearts. Uh, and what is the importance of uh, keeping people in our uh, hearts okay so we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back after the break uh, and we'll continue <laughs> 